lots and lots of calls on the helpline about um, about managing flares. Um, and very specifically, Zoe is going to talk about how you can make a toolkit to help you cope with flares. But um, just before we got started on it, I just thought it'd be, you know, people are always sort of talking to me about what they think might cause a flare. And Zoe, I think we've, we've heard things like stress and changes in the weather mm. and um, just generally feeling a bit, uh, a bit unwell, getting, having a cold coming on, all those things. So today, if you're, if you're listening in, just take a minute and, um, and just pop in the comments box what, if anything, you feel might contribute towards a flare. I think there's a lot of, uh, we don't know that there is anything in, you know, in particular, um, and the research and the evidence just isn't there. But today it'd be really great to hear. Lots of people have told me that this current damp, chilly weather is, um, is really not helping. What have you been hearing, Zoe, and what do you find? Yeah, I definitely agree. It, um, it's, it's difficult when there's not the research there, but I think from the helpline calls we get and from talking to people all the time with the condition, there's definitely that common theme. Um, personally, I definitely find the cold weather, and if I've been out for a walk and I've not had enough layers on and kept the cold wind off me, then that, I can really feel that. Um, I think stress is definitely one of the biggest things, so um, I'll definitely go through some of the things I, I use in my toolkit to help manage stress as well, because that's definitely something, you know, you can't, can't stop stressful events happening in life, but you can help reduce the physical effect of it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's and it, and it is surprising how little research has been carried out into, into what is an axial spondylar arthritis or an AS flare, um, what people experience, how long they last. I think the, the only major bit of research I've seen was a study by the Aberdeen um, Epidemiology Group who, who did some group discussions and depth interviews to really try to understand, but there's been very little else. I don't know if you've seen much, Zoe. Yeah, there's not a huge amount. I think because it is all so subjective, you, you know, it's not something, mm. you know, you can't unfortunately do a blood test for it. You can't, you know, you don't necessarily see it on a scan even. So it's difficult in terms of research terms. Um, in a few weeks, we've got um, Rosie Barnett joining us from Project Nightingale. So I think she'll be chatting a little bit about how the app has helped them look at flares, which I think will be really interesting. So hopefully there's more coming out. Yes. And um, as I said, specifically today, you, you're talking about how making a toolkit could help you. So before we get into, into what, what you're sort of suggesting, then what, why do you feel having a toolkit specifically is, is useful when you're, when you're having flares? So with, with Axio SPA, I think it's important to recognise that everyone's flares are completely different. So as you say, I'm, I'll go into my flare toolkit, but um, hopefully everyone in the comments will share what they have, you know, that helps them um, because, you know, everyone's flares are different and also even for the same person, your flares will vary each time as well. So I find that particularly if you've got a lot of pain and a lot of fatigue, it's really easy in the middle of that flare to actually forget the simple self-care things that you have that can really help you get through those. Mm. So having a particular place where you can go to or, you know, a, even a written list is really helpful because then you know in the middle of a flare when you know you're you've probably got brain fog you're not functioning at your best you've got something where you can just go there and, and find all the things that help you yeah and also if you're not a very neat and tidy person like me i suppose it helps to just know where everything is when you need it rather than running around looking for your um you know your heat pad or something like that just to know where everything is straight away Absolutely. So I keep mine just all in a drawer in my bedroom because then it's just somewhere, even in the middle of the night, if I wake up in a flare, I know exactly where I can go when I'm half asleep and um, yeah, know where to go. But you know, some people have, you know, a box of things um, or just a written list beside the bed or on the fridge, just something that, yeah, just makes you feel prepared. So even then between flares, you're, you've got a bit less of a worry about, you know, if a flare then starts coming on, you've just got that reassurance that, you know, you've got things there to support you. 
And I understand you've unpacked your drawer into a box. So okay. you're, you're going to be able to show everyone what's in your toolkit. And so I'm going to disappear while Zoe takes you through. But <laughs> while, you're, while you're watching, again, along with adding in any comments about what, what you feel might bring on a flare or contribute towards a flare, please do add in your, your tips. What, what is in your flare toolkit or what do you use to help you when you're having a flare? I think, you know, this is just Zoe's personal one, but you know, yours might have some completely different things in. So do let us know about it. And then we'll let go, Zoe go through hers and then we'll come back and have a chat. Lovely, thank you, Zoe. I'll just hide your video so that everyone, it should be a little bit bigger now. Yeah, so as Sally said, you know, this is just my personal flair toolkit and um, please do get involved in the comments because we can learn so much from each other. So I think it's really, um, yeah, really helpful if you all share what works for you. Um, so to begin with, as Sally said, I've moved my drawer into a box for the session today. Um, I would say that my first go to um, without a shadow of doubt is heat. So I have heat packs like this. Um, which I got from Amazon, which slots into a little bag like this, which has an elasticated strap. So this is particularly helpful if I'm getting um, inflammation and pain in my low back and into the top of my pelvis. So this um, lives in the drawer. But I do also have an ice pack that just lives in the freezer. Nine times out of 10, I go for heat, but occasionally I do find that ice can be really helpful. Um, so that's always worth just remembering that you've got something like that available too. Um, I do use a hot water bottle as well if I want something with a, a larger area and also you can use things like heated blankets um, and you know sort of coverings for the bed if you want sort of a general heat as well but having something like that in, in your toolkit is really helpful because then it even just gives you a reminder to maybe have try a hot bath or a hot shower because that can be really helpful in reducing pain just being generally soothing and relaxing and also just loosening off any tight muscles if you're getting muscle spasms as well. The other go-to that I find for muscle spasms is using massage. Um, obviously, at the moment with um, the COVID restrictions, we can't actually see someone for a massage. So I have different tips and tricks for that. So one of them is a spiky massage ball. And I've done a whole video on this previously. So we'll pop that in the comments afterwards. But these can be so helpful because you can use them just directly onto the muscles and just putting a little gentle pressure down. You can even use them on the back by leaning onto a wall onto the ball. And it's just a way of getting a little bit of gentle massage into the muscles, reducing that muscle tightness or muscle spasm and reducing the pain there as well. Um, but you can do it little and often. So you can do a couple of minutes every few hours if you want to. So you're less likely to get that soreness that you can get sometimes after a full massage. I know lots of people with Axpar do find that massages can uh, trigger a flare up reaction. So um, sometimes just doing the techniques yourself little and often gets the benefits, but without that soreness afterwards. Um, so do let me know in the comments if you use massage. Um, and as I said, we'll pop a link in the video uh, comments afterwards to that video. So if you do want some tips and tricks on massage, then you'll be able to follow those. Um, of course, medication. So I, I just packed up a couple of the, the boxes, but I do have a whole variety of medication that I can go to. Um, Again, we've just done a video um, on pain management with Colin Beaver, and he goes through some of the um, tips and tricks on using medication to help manage your pain. There's definitely a time and a place for medication, and what I found is I found a particular combination of things, um, so from more simple anti-inflammatories up through into standard painkillers and then stronger painkillers. So I know, depending on how severe a flare is, I'll normally start with an anti-inflammatory and then gradually go up to the stronger painkillers if I need to. The most important thing with medication is to speak to your doctor or your pharmacist to find exactly what works for you. So try and find medications that help control your pain levels but don't give you too many side effects. And then speak to them about the different doses that you can take and how frequently you can take them because obviously it's really important to know how frequently you can take them to help control the pain, but also know the maximum amount and how far apart you should take them as well, just for safety. So during a flare, as I said at the beginning of the session, it's understandable when you're in pain and you're fatigued and you've got brain fog, you know, you're not 100% there. 
So I'll often write down either just in my phone notes or just on a pen and paper. If I take some medication, I'll jot down the time and the dose so that then I can look back on it a few hours later and make sure that I'm not going to take the next dose too soon um, and just make sure that I'm keeping track of everything. So if you do find that medication is particularly helpful, keeping a notepad and pen in your tool toolkit can be really helpful just to help you keep track. Now, I do also have a variety of joint supports. Um, people with axial SPA sometimes get other joint pain. Personally, for me, I get um, foot and ankle pain and, and wrist pain at times as well. So I have a variety of more fixed support, but also I have um, tube grip style bandages as well, just to give me a little bit of extra support. So um, it's really helpful to have those available if you do find that you get other types of arthritis too. Um, going back to heat actually, uh, near the bottom of my box, I've got these um, heat packs, obviously different brands are available. Um, but if I am up and about, but I am flaring, then I find the stick on heat pads really helpful because then you can just get that continuous low level heat for a long period of time that can just help ease any stiffness and ease the pain there but still allow you to be up and about as well. And then in terms of um, more local medication as well, using something like an anti-inflammatory gel can be really helpful. So occasionally I'll get a flare which is really localized. So maybe in just a finger or um, at the moment, my big toe for some reason is, has decided to flare. So I just pop an uh, anti-inflammatory gel on because generally I'm feeling okay. So I don't need to take a, an anti-inflammatory. And for people, if you've got um, things like inflammatory bowel disease or um, have any problems taking anti-inflammatories, it's worth checking with a pharmacist to see if something like this would be helpful. So that then you've got something that locally will be an anti-inflammatory, but without having to, to take the tablet. Now, um, I mentioned this earlier that I go through some things that I use for um, stress relief as well, because not only do I and a lot of people with XFAR find that stress can trigger a flare up, um, but also if I am flaring, I want to really manage the impact that it has on me emotionally and, and reduce the stress with that as well. So just some really simple things. I've got a pillow spray, which is just a really nice um, lavender smell, which I can spray on my pillow um, either just before bed or you know, in the night if I'm struggling to sleep and I'm, I'm feeling anxious about that. It's just really nice just to have that nice um, comforting, relaxing smell and, and just sort of help take my mind off things a little bit. Similarly, you can get the roll on um, aromatherapy oils as well. So you can just roll this on pressure points and pulse points. And again, it's just a really nice relaxing smell. It's just, it's nice to have some little self-care things that you can do because often when you're flaring, you feel frustrated and, and anxious. So just some little things like that, that just, you know, you can do something nice for your body um, and just take the mind off things can be really powerful along the same lines as well just nice hand cream as well just you know something that um, it's just a bit of TLC you know there's no, no harm in that and then I in a previous video all about flares I went through a flare, um, flare book that I've made we also have on our website a flare booklet which you can download as a guide and that goes through a lot of these tips and tricks as well it's got spaces where you can also fill in the things that work for you. Um, so, but if you want to do something more creative, perhaps in a more minor flare, you want something that's a low energy activity, but it helps distract you and, and take your mind off things and there's something positive to do. So something like a flare book can be helpful. So I've started my sort of flare care plan with some nice quotes and some nice photos as well, so that I can have a read through um, if, I, if I want a little pick me up. I've also got all the important information there. So I've got my hospital number, the advice line for my hospital rheumatology department and my GP's phone number as well, because it's important to recognize that there are lots of things we can do to help manage flare ups. But sometimes, you know, you need just a little bit of extra advice and, um, and many people have their rheumatology team on hand to give that advice. Um, I would also advise as well, taking a note of our helpline number as well. And you can always note down my email address, which is in the video description, because you can always get in contact with us if you are struggling with a flare and you'd like any advice or you'd like someone to speak to, do, do get in contact with us. And then again, so a few more nice quotes and nice pictures and things that are really, really positive. And then I've got a page dedicated to self-care. So that's going through a lot of the things I've discussed, but also I've noted down um, exercises that I find really helpful. 
because it's very easy during a flare to feel like you just want to, to curl up and stay in bed. But there are lots of really gentle exercises that you can do that help ease the flare, help reduce muscle tension and help reduce the stiffness that you get in your joints as well. So you can take either print out some exercises that we've got available on our, on our website or take down links for our YouTube videos as well. And there are lots of different things that you can follow to help you get, get moving, get stretching but in a really gentle way so it's appropriate for when you're flaring. So just having a little written reminder of that is really helpful because sometimes, as I said, it's easy just to forget all the different things that do help. And nutrition is really important during a flare up. So making sure that you're drinking water regularly, you're eating regularly, even if it's just small amounts and often if you don't have the energy to prepare a full meal. Um, in my flare toolkit, ideally I would have a bar of chocolate or something like that as well. Again, just to um, give me a little pick me up, uh, but funnily enough, I don't have a supply of that at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, in terms of nutrition, it, it's important to, to look after your nutrition, but also have a treat every now and then as well. Something that isn't in my toolkit that I have used previously is a TENS machine. Again, we've got a whole video all about TENS machines um, that we did uh, a couple of weeks ago with Colin Beaver, um, or back in December, I think that was, so we can link to that in the comments too. Um, but TENS machines can be very helpful in helping particularly during more severe flare-ups. If you do have a TENS machine, then do store it in your toolkit, but remove the batteries so that then you, um, you, know, you, you know that the batteries are going to be good. They're not, if you don't use it for a while, they're not going to corrode and, and affect the machine or anything like that. If you're lucky enough not to need medication very often, then do make sure that you periodically check the expiry dates on them and make sure they haven't expired as well. And um, I would say that's pretty much summed up my, um, my toolkit. I'll have a quick look through the flare book and just see if there's anything else that I've missed. Um, I have noted down that I find yoga really helpful. Um, there are lots of videos online to help with that as well in terms of really gentle um, AS yoga as well. Um, so do let, let us know in the comments. Sally will be joining me shortly to go through any questions that you have and also go through what you've shared. So please do let us know, is there anything that you have in your toolkit? Is there anything I've mentioned that you hadn't thought of using before that would be helpful? And if you are struggling, please pop it in the comments because we may have some suggestions that may help with that, but also other people watching may well as well. So please do um, get, get a conversation going and help each other through there. So I'll bring Sally back now and um, we will have a look through the um, questions and the comments. Hopefully I've not just bombarded you all with information, <laughs> but hopefully given you a few ideas. Hi Sally. Hello. Uh, so yeah, that was really interesting. Thank you. That, and we've had lots of uh, comments. So just in terms of, so we at the beginning we asked what, what do you find can cause a flare or bring on a flare and stress which we I think we we mentioned has come up a lot but an interesting one which I don't think either of us mentioned was over exercising uh, and I wondered if you had any any comments on that absolutely it shows that when you're not in a flare-up it's really easy to kind of forget exactly how flares are for you because over exercise is definitely something that I find triggers particularly my rib pain if I do too much of the spinal movements I can then actually cause a rib flare up so the best thing I can advise is just doing little and often it's um it's something that it's difficult to do because you need to keep reminding yourself so sometimes having a note you know post-its around the house like somewhere where you see them quite frequently so you know the kettle the fridge the bathroom mirror just to give you reminders to not necessarily do lots of exercise, but just do a few, a few exercises in a small amount, but more frequently. If you enjoy doing things, um, exercise that really gets your heart rate up and you want that kind of cardio exercise, then HIIT can be really helpful. So the high intensity interval training, um, because it's a really great workout, gets your heart rate up, gets you moving, um, but you can just do it for you know, 10, 15 minutes and hopefully it's then less likely to cause a flare and less likely to impact the fatigue if you're getting fatigue as well. Yeah, and um, the, the the other one which came up as um, a sort of an, an issue which can cause flares is, is heavy massage. And I think you, we, you've done a, um, a Facebook Live on massage before and sort of talked about the importance of making sure that uh, 
as the massage therapist really understands your AS and things, haven't you? Absolutely. Yeah, I'd always say chat to a massage therapist beforehand, make sure they've got, you know, at, at least some knowledge of AS. Um, but importantly, make sure that they'll, you know, really listen to you in terms of the amount of pressure they're using and, and the time they're doing. You can also, if, if you're new to having a physical massage from someone, you can always have shorter massages to begin with and much you know, softer pressure. And then just, you know, when you then next go back, maybe try a firmer pressure and, and build up the time gradually. You know, there's no harm in sort of trying a smaller amount and building it up as well. Yeah. And then we have an interesting comment from Kaylee, um, which I hope I've pronounced your name right. Um, so Kaylee's just had the COVID vaccine and has flared. And she's wondering if this is something that's expected. And I've been speaking to a lot of people on the helpline before and after um, their COVID vaccine. And um, most people, I'd say there's no evidence there to say that people would or wouldn't experience uh, flares. Um, most people I've spoken to have, um, have had no issues. They've got back to me after the vaccine and um, they've said they've had no problems. But what I would say to anyone who's having the, uh, any of the COVID vaccines, because there's a couple out now and more to come, is that if you have a symptom or something happens after your vaccine, like, like something like a flare, what I'd advise you to do is just Google um, MHRA yellow card system. And it's a really good thing to go on and, and, and just they'll ask you which, which vaccine you had, when you had it, what you experienced afterwards. And that's a really good way of, of just making sure that those things are recorded because it, who knows if it does cause a flare up, that's, that's the way that we'll find out. So do go on and do that after that. Sorry, a bit of a departure back to flares. Um, so we've had some... Um, having lots of good comments coming in. Um, so the heat, you know, the, the heat seems to be a big one. Hot water bottles, heated back pads, stick on heat pads, all those sorts of things. Uh, wheat bags as well. Grace um, mentioned a vibrating roller, which I mm. hadn't heard about before. Have you had much experience with those? Uh, yes, I've seen, I haven't used one myself, but I have seen them, um, a lot of runners use them because like particularly on the hamstrings, which are quite big muscles, it's quite good for really working into there. Anything with a foam roller, again, it's like the, um, the massage ball that I said, um, is just really start very gently with it and then gradually build it up depending on how you're feeling. And if you are in a flare, you may find that you just want to do a lot less pressure than you normally would when you're not in a flare, so you, you can really vary it. Um, obviously try not to roll directly onto bony parts. Um, so like for the spine and things, if you try and massage just to the edge of the bony part of the spine, just because it, it probably will be quite tender to actually work over the bones themselves. Um, yeah, I've heard good things about them. Brilliant. And um, just going back to, I mean, we sort of said we don't really, there's, there's no, there's not been good research into flares. We don't know exactly what a flare looks like and, no one's ever sort of gone and really interviewed lots of people with AS and, and got down all the symptoms. But a couple of people have been saying that um, they've been experienced, you know, they, they've had a few days of sort of headaches and achiness. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite hard to pull out, isn't it? Is that a flare? Is that you've got a low level virus? What, what would you say to those people? Yeah, I think it is really difficult to kind of pick apart those symptoms and, and tell. Mm. Sometimes it's just a matter of, you know, time will tell. Obviously, if it's, you know, if it's a virus or a cold coming on, then normally that would then progress. Whereas if it then eases back off, it's probably more likely to be a flare. I would say for those kind of symptoms, just generally take it a little bit easier, pace your activities really well, so you're not then going to kind of, um, you know, trigger a flare up if it is a few sort of warning signs. Um, and definitely in terms of drinking plenty of water and, and eating well as well, be really helpful for that. No, oh, that's brilliant. I, I just think it's so hard for people living with AS because it's very easy to think everything's uh, related to your AS, and but sometimes it can be other things too. So it's Absolutely. important to be aware of that. Um, 
And uh, actually, just a really interesting comment on here from Angela, who says that she uses a sacroiliac belt when mm -hmm. she has uh, low back pain and she finds it supportive and gives her relief during the day so just wondered what, what your thoughts on that would be I would say that would probably be a bit of a marmite thing um, a lot of people yeah. for if you've got SI pain a lot of people any pressure you know it would just be a no-go um, but I think it's probably similar to heat where it's just that kind of soothing comforting feeling can be really helpful um, and particularly um, for women as well, depending on your menstrual cycle and the hormones fluctuating as well, that can affect bone and joint pain too. So sometimes mm. um, if you're then using that supportive belt, it could be that it's helping um, in terms of that. So again, like you say, whether it's related to AS or not, it's difficult to know. Um, obviously in terms of long-term, I wouldn't say to, uh, to use a support belt like that for too long or for too long periods in one go, just because we do want to make sure that the muscles are all um, really working and active and, and keeping strong as well long term but yeah if it if it helps you go for it definitely yeah because definitely in our uh, in our guides we do highlight you know not to use long term sort of you know I think people who sometimes used to wear sort of very supportive girdles and mm -hmm. you know big belts and uh, we would really advise uh, against that because that you know potentially as you say could affect your muscles uh, and the way they work and also you know, potentially, you know, you could end up with fusion. So mm. you do need to be careful, I think, don't you, in your use yeah. of those. But as you say, short term sounds, if it works for you. And then I think just the other final question, we'll, we won't go, we won't keep you all forever, but I think my final question about it would be, is what's your advice? You know, people are starting to feel they're coming to the end of the flare, things are starting to improve. What advice would you have about sort of gently getting yourself back so that you don't end up back at square one again? I would say, yeah, personally, I'm very stubborn and I this is definitely my weakest area, I would say, because as soon as I get that glimmer of normality, it's like, right, I'm going to go and catch up on everything. Um, so the biggest thing I would say is just mentally just giving yourself that reminder to still take it a little bit easier. Um, sometimes if, if you enjoy sort of planning things and scheduling things, it's quite good to just plan your day out so that you know you're not going to then be tempted to do a little bit too much and then potentially, you know, extend the flare or, or make it worse. Um, a really helpful thing, um, if you have a long to-do list, is to look down that to-do list and pick out sort of one or two which are really the most important and most urgent tasks. And then you can just say, right, you know, tomorrow I'm only going to focus on those two, try and forget about the rest of the list. And then it means that you can manage your energy levels a lot better. And um, similarly, you can do that with exercise. So just start by a small amount of exercise, plan it in so that you know you've got um, a little bit of exercise followed by rest. And then just gradually over a few days then gradually build that back up again. And in fact, tracking your flares can be really helpful because that can give you a good idea of things that trigger it, things that help. So you can just make a note of how frequently you get the flares, how severe they are, whereabouts they are and, and how long they last. Yes, and I think you're going to be doing um, a Facebook Live in the next couple of weeks, aren't you, about some of the apps that are available to help with, with things like that? Yes, yeah, I think that's the 25th of Feb. Yeah, so brilliant. I mean, and, you know, I can see people are making other comments about what helps during flares. Uh, I think uh, Gerald and Kirsty are saying music can really help. Um, mm -hmm. So and uh, Dan's talking about simplifying his diet, sort of cutting out spicy foods and things. Uh, I would just say, please, um, you know, you're you're you you live with AS. You know what helps, and I think for you to share um, what helps you, I think that that's a massive help. So please do take the time to to you know keep commenting. It it, it it's really helpful. You might write something that just really changes some things for someone else. So please keep um, adding your comments. Um, Zoe, did you have anything else you wanted to say? I don't think so. I think we covered everything. But as you said, I'm really intrigued to go back into the comments and see what's come up because, yeah, it, it's amazing. You know, even someone who's had tax bar for like 20 years, they might meet someone who then has, has another idea, a new thing they've never tried. So it's always always learning and the things we learn from everyone we then share on the helpline when people call us for advice as well 
Yes, and Susie's just commented on Epsom salts in a hot bath. And I've had a few different people saying how helpful that can be, especially I think if you can add a little bit of um, essential oils or nice smell as well. I've, I've heard quite a few people talking about Epsom salts to us. So do keep adding it. And thank you very much, Zoe. I think uh, next week we are talking about... Nothing are we having a week off no. We've got life coaching with Julie. That's it. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, right. so that'll be a really nice, interesting one. For that one, you need to come ready with an issue that um, you would really like to resolve. And she's going to help you work through that with her questions. So I um, hope you enjoy that one. And thank you, everyone, for for taking part and thank you so much Zoe as well for sharing your uh your 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 flat toolkit you're welcome thanks for turning the tables on me this week <laughs> all right thank you everyone take care everyone all right bye, bye.